hello and welcome to my video thank you so much for clicking i had some computer troubles this week my laptop died it completely broke i dropped it in water and there was no coming back from that and i had a video that i was editing and i lost everything and so i upload every sunday and i ended up getting a new computer on friday thankfully i already had this video filmed so yesterday i was able to edit it a bunch but i never actually filmed the intro and outro so welcome to the video if you've never seen me before my name is emma i make videos about perfume today we're gonna be talking about born to stand out which is kind of a controversial fragrance brand i have some of their new launches and I thought we could go through their sample sets and try them all. Let me know what videos you want to see next. Please leave me a comment, like this video, subscribe because a lot of you aren't subscribed. So what are you doing? What are you doing? Join! I'm a really nice girl. So yeah, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for watching this video and without further ado, let's get into it. Born to Stand Out is a South Korean brand. Their tagline is insanity is relative. No animal drive products, no plant products with sustainability concerns or with toxic allergens. Recyclable, refillable, and reusable. We believe it takes nothing away from a human to be kind to an animal. We believe you need a little bit of insanity to do great things and we believe in a crazy, messy life. The bottles are made of white porcelain. White is kind of like pure elegant where they have this crimson red, which is like a dramatic contrast color to the white. So I have four full-size fragrances from them and i also have two discovery sets that we will be going through we have the dark and drunk discovery set and we also have the dirty and sticky discovery set um this is the discovery set looks like they gave me a affiliate code so if there's anything here that catches your eye you can use the code love emma either in all lowercase or all capitals so you can use that to pick up anything from the btso website no obligation this video is not an ad just open it up and it says who bleeping cares sample cards and then we have these this is really cute packaging oh my gosh this is so funny it actually pops out like this. I've never seen anything like this before. I guess born to stand out. It's literally standing out. The one that really interests me is Angel's Powder. It's kind of going viral online right now because it is supposed to be this Y2K fragrance with a nail polish note. And they actually have the ingredients on the back, which is kind of cool. So the notes it says are cotton candy, nail polish, and vanilla sugar. This is really interesting. It's nostalgic. It smells like something I've smelled before. Peppery. Oh my God, it smells like double bubble. That's what it smells like to me. And I'm getting more nail polish the more that it sits. But it's, uh, I wouldn't say it smells like nail polish. When I'm reading the notes, I'm like, I guess it's the nail polish that I'm smelling. It's interesting. It's not a love. It's like a, oh, okay. A little fruity, a little powdery, a little plush. There's something a little weird in it. And again, I think that's the nail polish note. Thankfully, it doesn't smell like nail polish to me, but it just smells like, I don't know. It's not something I would buy and buy the full size of, but fun regardless. Okay, the next one that we have is called Dirty Heaven. This fragrance has tonka bean, jasmine, and gray amber. I think this one was kind of popular when it came out. Mm. Yeah, this is really pretty. It's like a candied vanilla note. It's just hitting me that I haven't eaten breakfast. <laughs> vanilla, it's warm. There's a synthetic plasticky note to it. I think it's the saffron. It's like a candied saffron scent. It's a like, it's not a love, but it's interesting. I took a little break to have a little bit of breakfast because I was smelling and my brain was wandering. So anyways, I let these dry down. Dirty Heaven is beautiful. It becomes more warm. It kind of reminds me, like it's a very, very simple scent. It's just kind of warm, nice, a little, a little plasticky. It smells plush, like soft. Like it smells like one of those kind of fur, like faux fur blankets. Like, you know, the soft, I have one, I'll put a picture up, but like those kind of like soft, fur, like fuzzy, furry blankets. That's what it smells like. Angel's Powder, really powdery. Again, I don't smell nail polish, but it smells like pepper mixed with, I smell Gaiac wood, heliotrope, pepper, and like Ambroxan or something, like Isoe Super. It smells more like a pencil shavings note. The next one that we have is Dirty Rice, which I actually have in the full size. So this is the best seller from Born to Stand Out. This one is Basmani Rice, Milk, and Sandalwood, which is my ideal scent, honestly, from, oh, this has really leaked, and I literally store this standing up. So how come this has leaked so much? Okay. Something to note, potentially these might be leaking. This fragrance is, for some reason it doesn't smell how I would expect based on the notes. I get a very strong sandalwood note and I get like Isoe Super almost. It does have also that pencil shavings note in here. Kind of similar to Le Papier from Diptyque, how it smells like pencil shavings, I guess. Yeah, I really wanted this to be like a creamy, ricey bowl of creamy rice and I don't think I smell that very much but I would say this is kind of a beast mode performer it's a sandalwood scent and sandalwood is so strong uh, I just wish I liked it better it's made from Olivier Cresp who is a icon there's almond bergamot peony like I'm not getting any of that I, when I smell this all I smell is sandalwood okay I'm gonna let it chill for a second there oh 
Okay, I put it on my skin. It's a little different. Yeah, honestly, mostly sandalwood. I do get the Cetalox, which is a patented note. It's actually the note, the only note that there is in Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume. So there is that literally Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume DNA in this. Overall, not my favorite. It has, It's a little clean in the background too. It's just not my type of thing. Honestly, based on the notes and everything, I would have blind bought this. Like I thought this would be everything, but it smells too, I don't know. Also, it's raining outside. It's really pretty. I kind of want to show you. Next one that we have is called Fig Corn. It is their fig scent. Fig is one of those notes that I feel like has been marketed to me so much on TikTok and other social media platforms. And I like the thought of a fig. In fact, like the Sylvia Plath fig tree analogy has really been hitting since graduating university. But I don't know if I love it as a note. This one's a really sweet, almost candied fig scent. It got a lot of pear in the background, which gives it this like juicy, splashy opening. It's kind of soapy and it smells just a little weird. Like, you know, I would expect this to be a lot more smooth, but the fig kind of disrupts it. Oh my gosh, it's raining so much. Definitely a lot of bergamot and the bergamot is a little screechy. Like it's screechy, like a shower gel. It's kind of bubbly, but a little screechy at the same time. Oh my God, I, sound I found the funniest fragrant to comment on it. Genuinely the worst thing to ever grace my scent receptors. This is the most unpleasant olfactory experience of all time. 76 hours of longevity and I hate every second of it. This shit is nuclear and will repel any attractive individuals in your vicinity. I recommend this fragrance for Kelly Clarkson and all her goons. I'm sorry, but the fact that they are upset with this fragrance because they don't like it and in their review of a fragrance that they don't like, they take a moment to just drag Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> Like, what did Kelly Clarkson do? Is there beef? Like, she's just like a mom. Kelly Clarkson just said, since you've been gone, and this person took it personally. Why does this person hate Kelly Clarkson? This is absolutely horrendous. Notes of dead children and mushrooms growing from special socks. I discriminate against anyone that owns the effing disgrace to the olfactory art of fragrance. It is not that bad. It's, I don't think that at all. It's literally just kind of like a slightly screechy pear fig scent. I don't hate this at all. And then the comment under it is, this fragrance makes me feel like a Disney princess. <laughs> the opening is sweet and fluffy with the pear and peony being dominating notes to my nose. I get the fig, which adds a grounding freshness to the scent, but this is not your everyday super green fig. Yeah, it's like fluffy and a very floral fig scent. It's just, mm, yeah, like I wouldn't go back to it much more. I don't love it, but it exists. It's just kind of neutral. Next up, we have Happy Nuts. This is the pistachio almond scent that I have been so excited to smell. Honestly, I find it so hard to find a good pistachio scent because I find that pistachio is really easy to get a good scent in the beginning and then completely fall through. Like pistachio smells good generally on first spray and then after that it goes either really powdery or really like just bad. So let's try it. This fragrance has notes of pistachio, almond, and black sesame. So I like black sesame. It's a really strong note in commodity milk. Oh, this I get a lot of honey in it. The pistachio smells similar to Dies and Durga's pistachio, except this doesn't have the same amount of patchouli because that one is a patchouli bomb. There's almond, which is powdery. As I expected, the first spray, the first initial smell, amazing. But the more I smell it, I'm like, do I really love it? It's very powdery, very, very, very powdery. It does not smell like baklava royale to me. I put this on skin and I will come back to it and let you know what I think. Happy Nuts on my skin smells really weird. It smells like chocolate on my skin. This is nice. It's not anything to write home about, unfortunately. I think that the sniff did heal the way a little better because they did similar notes of Divana. I think they did rum too. And that one I think is just smells better than this. This one, the almond completely takes over. I get a little bit of caramel, but it's just kind of a syrupy headache. Whereas this one I think is really good. Okay, next up we have Indecent Cherry. Funny story, I wore this fragrance the day that I wore the Bianco Latte fragrance. I had Indecent Cherry on one hand and I had Bianco Latte on the other and that was the day that I went to class and I kept getting compliments on Bianco Latte. This fragrance I was wearing, but Bianco Latte was like really projecting and it's the one I showed both of them to my professor, but he only bought Bianco Latte. So I didn't really talk about this, but I actually was wearing them both at the same time the day that my Bianco Latte thing happened is a really soapy cherry scent. There's nothing indecent about it. Like it smells like a cherry scent that is in the shower. Like, you know, when you walk into a shower room where like someone is showering and it's steamy in there and clean and bubbly, that's what this smells like to me. I think it's the strawberry note that I think smells like that to me. But to me, like this is so soapy the longer it goes on my skin. 
It's very strong and a lot of people say it's like vampy, alluring and I definitely think like reading all the Fragrantica reviews that seems like everyone else is picking up on like vampy, alluring, sexy, dark but like for me this is really soapy. Okay next up we have Nanatopia and apparently banana is going to be an upcoming trendy note. Apparently Kayali is releasing a summer collection with banana in it. Excited to see how that goes. Here we have Nanatopia with banana bread, rum, and caramel. I'm excited about this. I don't know a lot of banana scented fragrances and I've heard, I've heard that this one smells good. I'm so excited for this one. Oh my God. It's literally those like banana candies, like the hard ones that are just sugar and banana flavoring. I don't know if I'm getting banana bread, honestly, like just because they're using, synth using synthetic banana, it doesn't smell like actual bananas like isn't that the thing where the scent of synthetic banana is actually the scent of this ancient um banana that you can't get anymore extinct banana species and so when i'm smelling this i'm just smelling the extinct banana species that i smell in my banana candy i'm not smelling actual banana bread However, the longer it sits, I think that adding the rum and the nutmeg and the cinnamon was a good idea to warm it up. I'm gonna try this on skin too. The last one that we have is Sugar Addict, which apparently the scent is supposed to be like not necessarily worn on its own, but it's something you can add to a scent that you wanna sweeten it up. Um, it's funny, I usually use Kayali Vanilla 28 as like a sweetener because it's just a very neutral vanilla scent that I feel like you can just layer really easily. But that's kind of what this is supposed to be. Oh my God, Nanotopia on skin is really weird. Oh my god, it smells so familiar, but it smells so bad. On this skin, this smells really bad on me. Uh-uh-uh, this smells like old, plastic, moldy on skin. I can't express to you how horrible this smells. Like rotten cinnamon altoids. No banana whatsoever. It could not smell more different on paper. That is not the same perfume. Oh my god. That is not... It's not that bad, but there's, this smells like there's a nail polish note in it. It might just be my skin chemistry or something. Cause on paper it smells so different, but on skin, horrible. Happy Nuts smells a lot better now smelling it compared to that, but I still think Happy Nuts, it's just a little too powdery for me. Dirty Rice is actually taking the cake. It's been on my skin for a little while and it's really pretty. And I'm getting more of that milkiness and it's kind of clean. I think the opening is just so strong with the sandalwood, but really the creaminess is coming out more. And I even get some of the peony facets, like some of the really pretty, parts of it it's coming out and it's definitely like a softer scent now that the casino wood is kind of settled but it is gorgeous so dirty rice actually really quite like it um finally sugar addict this fragrance has a cacao note and you can see that there's like chocolate dark juice color to this so i would be careful spraying this fragrance onto let me spray it onto a white piece of paper yeah careful spraying it on white clothing i sprayed it on here and it doesn't look that bad it is sweet but there's not much to it it's just like a sweet scent. It's really nice. It's just, there's not much to it, but I think that that's kind of like the point. You're just kind of supposed to like add it to things. Sugar, cinnamon essence. Cinnamon is really soft in here. Not getting much cinnamon. Cocoa absolute, coffee extract, tonka bean, vanilla absolute. I get mostly tonka bean. It's vanilla. It's a little sugary. I get like sugar and tonka bean, which is interesting. Like I feel like it's warmth from within, but then sugar is kind of on top. It's nice. And there's like a little bit of labdanum and rum. So that warm background. Yeah. Wear it alone for a delicious skin scent or layer it with your boldest, most daring perfumes to create a signature that's both intoxicating and uniquely yours. I quite like it. It's good. It's like literally just gourmand, but it's a nice one. Now we're moving on to our second discovery set, which is the dark and drunk discovery set. I didn't expect to like this one as much because I don't know if I like like the deep, really rich, like oud -y scents. I cannot get over how offensive that Nanotopia one is. It's so not me. Burnt Roses is the first one here. Ooh, pretty. It's reminding me of Portrait of a Lady and Tom Ford Cafe Rose. There's aldehydes and ozonic notes in the opening, but I wouldn't say that this is super aldehydic. It doesn't have that sharp soap kind of note it's just kind of fresh with an interesting background i get a lot of the black pepper but it's not offensive and the patchouli is soft i quite like this it, you know it's pretty similar to a lot of the rose fragrances that you have out there you know like similar to cafe rose i'm almost getting like portrait of a lady vibes except this is not as gourmand but i like it i actually really like it i wouldn't say it smells burnt it smells actually more fresh so it's interesting yeah interesting interesting one next up we have drunk saffron this one has that really offensive note that I smell in Nanotopia. What is it? Is it the rum? It has to be the rum note. It's so bad. I'm sorry. People probably like this. I just do not like it. Man, people like this. I do not like it. It smells so dusty. Like there's something that, some kind of scent memory that I have with a scent that I'm smelling in this that I also smell in Nanotopia. I'm, I'm picturing like dust or something. Like that's what I'm smelling with this. But when I read reviews, nobody's getting that. So I don't know if that's like just a me thing, but yeah. 
Not a big fan. Not a big fan at all. Next up we have Zest ZNT. I hope I will like this one. I think this one was a collaboration with a bar, but I generally like the like alcoholy, fresh cocktail scents. I really like Gentle Fluidity Silver from MFK. It's the best gin scent. Oh, this is so nice. It smells like a men's cologne. Very masculine, clean, fizzy. Love it. I love the cocktail notes. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think it's really pretty. It's just like fresh and zesty. It smells nice. It smells like YSL Y. Um, next up we have Drunk Lovers. We'll see how this one is. It's like every one of the fragrances that has like rum or cognac has that really gross note. So I'm scared it's going to be in here. No. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. Oh, this is pretty. Okay, cognac, red berries, grapefruit, juniper. Really pretty. It's kind of funny because there's like grapefruit, which is a little fresh and grapefruit can smell a little like armpit odor sometimes. It has this like sour kind of musty scent sometimes, but I love grapefruit. I'm not smelling the sour mustiness, but I smell something fresh. And I think that grapefruit is a really nice way to add in like the tiniest touch of, I mean, the concept is like drunk lovers. So if you want something that smells a little human and a little like you're sweating maybe, then grapefruit is an interesting way to add a little freshness to this thick cognac pepper vanilla scent with juniper, bergamot, lemon. Honestly, I put it on my skin, I quite like it. It's interesting. It's like a fresh scent mixed with something that's deeper. It smells a little like stronger with you. It smells a little bit like narcotic delight. I quite like it. I think it's pretty. I like it. Picasso. Next up we have Unholy Oud, and I'm not the biggest Oud person. This one has incense, Turkish rose, and Laotian Oud, which is generally the like skankiest Oud. I'm nervous. Okay. This is not bad. Oh, I'm getting the skankiness. It's very soft. This is really interesting. Hello, so it is the next day. I got really busy. I have three fragrances left to smell. This one we have is called and cognac and from my taste i'm not a big leather person oh it's earthy it's a little sweet but it's not too sweet it's like a woody oud but it's very nice oh my god the perfumer who made this made oriana i think he's definitely worked with parfum de marley yeah i like it i didn't expect to like it but i really like this one it'd be really nice on a man it's kind of in the vibe of like oud wood or something like that but it's not as strong or it's not as like woody it smells a little more ambery a little more balsamic i love okay next up we have smoke and gun i don't know anything about this one but i'm gonna guess it's gonna be like a smoky scent it says peated whiskey pine and incense Ooh, oh my god this is so nice it's like t-rex from zoologist but wearable <laughs> it's so pretty and this is unique i don't smell this very much i almost get honey honey rum tobacco bitter orange leather mm, a little bit of like a spice bomb note oh my god no one is talking about this but this is beautiful it's like this boozy tobacco-y scent really nice nobody's talking about this it's really good okay the final one that we have is djaf which is another one that i haven't heard anything about it it says bergamot incense and sandalwood it smells like any kind of like powdery citrusy men scent i've walked into an abercrombie it smells like la nuit de l'homme but fresher it's not horrible but i don't think that the citrus really blends very well with the background the citrus is like hanging out on top and then there's like more happening under but it's not like blended so i don't like that as much um i also wanted to add a new fragrance that they have this one's called dirty rainbow and this is their pride release this is a limited edition bottle i think that they have two thousand of them cap at least on mine is like loose it comes off really easy whereas the other ones you can hold from the cap but this one if i were to hold it i i can't I can't. So this one, the cap doesn't fit the same. It might be just mine, but I don't know. I prefer the cap a little more secure. This is a very saffron leather forward fragrance. It's supposed to have fragrances inspired by all the colors of the rainbow. So you have yellow peach, orange blossom, lavender, violet, red saffron, and green ivy. But I smell so much leather in this. There's a really pleasant aspect to this fragrance, but I think that this like leathery kind of tire note makes it not very wearable. It's super long lasting. And evaluation wise, this is something I can smell and go, oh, I I like this like I think it smells actually good but it's never something I would wear because I'm just not a leather person it's very leathery a little mineral this one has really negative reviews on Fragrantica which is funny because I do find this nice like in terms of protection and longevity it's nice it's a good like warm spicy leather scent if you really like leather I don't see it in the notes but it's so strongly leathery and like metallic a little bit very very saffron forward I'm honored they sent this to me. I think it's a cool limited edition release. I'm not going to miss it when it's gone, but it's an interesting launch nonetheless. I thought I would go through the fragrances and tell you which ones are my favorites and which ones I think you should get. These are the ones I have in full sizes. We have first Dirty Heaven, which is the vanilla tonka bean scent. I really like this one. Again, it's 
it almost has this like cherry like opening but when it dries down it softens into a warm vanilla tonka bean scent which i find just like easy dirty rice is another one that i wasn't a big fan of through the opening i just found that the sandalwood took over but the dry down i found was quite pretty it's just too bad because my bottle leaks like you couldn't really see it there but it's just covered in oil there's oil all over my finger now yeah, to me, this is a pencil shavings molecular fragrance. I don't get any of the milk notes, but I do think that I like amber vanilla a little more than this, which is from Seven Virtues. This is another like second skin like scent, but it's just a little more my style with the incorporation of other notes i just feel like it's done better in amber vanilla especially for the price discrepancy of all the fragrances that i smelled i think that some of my favorites were s and cognac i liked the zest znt as well i liked burnt roses and i think i liked drunk lovers too that was another interesting one. Oh, and smoke and gun was interesting as well the ones that i expected to like i didn't like as much nantopia was a miss happy nuts happy nuts was okay but i still wouldn't buy it i feel like a lot of these were kind of just like almosts for me which is upsetting because i was really really interested in this brand but again i did also have 26 fragrances that I smelled in one sitting. I'm actually not sure how many I smelled. It might have been only 20. By the way, I smelled them all in one sitting. I haven't really gotten to wear them yet, so I'll continue to wear these. Let me know in the comments if there's any of them that you guys recommend that I give a second look to, try a little more. Obviously, these were just my first impressions. I do think that first impressions can be kind of fun, so I wanted to give you this video of testing out the brand. You can use the code Love Emma if you want to pick anything up from them. That is an affiliate code that they gave me. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the next video, and I love you guys. I'll see you soon.